Okay, we are live. I'm Joe Terosian, and this is the Riverbank Faith Virtual Good Morning for April the 10th, 2023. It is good to be here the day after Easter, but <clears throat> the good news is if you didn't make it to church yesterday, you can make it to church this Sunday, and guess what? We'll still be celebrating the resurrection of our Lord. Amen? Amen. So we're going to be in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 23 and 24, a real simple passage, and uh, we're going to read it, do a brief application, pray, and get you folks uh, out of here, okay? Uh, this is Paul to the church in Thessalonica, and, uh, and we'll see what he has to say. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 23 through 24, and he writes, May God himself, the God of peace, Sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord, Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Love that. That's, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord, Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. So the application here is uh, is brief it's pretty simple but to be sanctified as paul's calling for them to be sanctified doesn't mean you get to glow in the dark or bring fire out of the sky right we hear that word sanctify and we think it has a lot of weight to it like something unique or distinct we're gonna you know again glow in the dark but the idea behind the word sanctify is to is to be holy is to be set apart to be unlike anything else to be distinct and uh, we're all human, right? We're all creating the image of God, right? Uh, but not everyone is setting themselves apart for the Lord. And Paul's saying, uh, Paul's saying here, uh, may the God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. And of course, he can't do that until we give him agency to do that, right? Because we have free will. But there are people that have set themselves a lot. They have dedicated their lives to the Lord. And uh, it doesn't make us all ministers. It doesn't make us all ministry, uh, missionaries. But we set ourselves apart to live for the Lord. Uh, an example would be clothes are clothed, right? Clothes. We are, we are all clothed, right? Um, but we don't call what a football player wears clothes. We call it a uniform. person in a football uniform kind of stands out. Uh, uh, go to a restaurant, right? We're all clothed, right? Uh, you know, no, what is it? No shirts, no shoes, no service, right? Uh, we're all clothed, uh, and so is a soldier. But as, uh, but a soldier in uniform stands out. If we're at a restaurant or in a mall or in some department store, we notice the person in the uniform, right? Because they're different than everybody else. So when Paul desires for the Thessalonians to be sanctified through and through, he wants them to be set apart for the Lord. Not like everybody else, not like the rest of the world. Uh, chasing after the trends of the world and the things of this world, the fraudulence of this world. He says, no, no, set yourself apart and, and go after the things of God. We in the church have a tendency, uh, those of us who are believers, we have a tendency <coughs> to set apart Sundays for the Lord, which is awesome. But that's all we set apart for the Lord. Uh, however, to be truly set apart for the Lord means to set apart our spirit, soul, and body, as Paul is talking about here our being, our thoughts, our actions, what we do, whatever it may be, that uh, whatever whatever that is, it's done for the Lord. And, 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 and the other aspect of this passage too, <clears throat> at the close of verse 23, you know, don't stress about uh, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, right? There's nothing ominous about what Paul is mentioning here. Yes, Paul believed Jesus was coming. We all have through the centuries. But notice in this passage here, what he's saying is, he gives no special instructions here on what to do regarding it or what to watch out for. He's saying, just live your lives um, the way the Lord would have you live them. Be holy. Set yourself apart. Allow him to sanctify you as his. And this doesn't mean you'll be perfect. It doesn't mean you'll glow in the dark or be able to bring fire out of the sky. But what it does, as we surrender to the Lord and set ourselves apart for the Lord and let him work completely through us, it gives us that proximity to face the things that we face in this world. It gives us that proximity to the Lord, that relationship with the Lord that allows us to face 
and combat the intelligent evil we see each and every day. And we know there's an intelligent evil working out there, not to just do us harm, but to bring us despair. And, uh, and, and, and again, targets for that are young people. And so we want to set ourselves apart. We want our young people set apart so that their every being, their every aspect of their lives uh, is focused on serving the Lord. And again, doesn't make them missionaries, doesn't make them preachers. It just makes them set apart. That is the Lord's person. And that's what we want. And we want them uh, not to be able to just survive going on a campus every day. We want them to thrive. We want them to stand out. We want them to be the salt and light um, that we've all been called to be, as we need to be, as uh, those teachers in those difficult places need to be, as those police officers in those difficult places need to be, as the soldiers in those difficult places need to be, as the believers with a believing loyalty in Jesus Christ who work in the halls of government at all levels and all that corruption, um, as they need to be salt and light. And the way we combat that is by having a proximity to the Lord, by setting ourselves apart to the Lord, not to the trends and fraudulence of this world. Amen? Amen. So uh, continue to pray. We had a great Sunday yesterday. Uh, it was awesome. Um, and uh, continue to pray. Our new website, Burbank Faith Virtual, is up and live. And you can just type in Burbank Faith Virtual. And our old website is up, and we'll be posting links that'll take you to the new website. But be in prayer for that, because we don't just want a website. We want a ministry through our website. That's why we invested a little bit in it. We want revival to continue. Uh, we want those things that started at Asbury to reach other places, other Christian campuses, Christian churches, Christian homes, uh, our, our shores, that even for those that aren't believing, we want that revival to reach uh, our neighborhoods, our hearts, uh, and our cities and all those places in between. Uh, we want to pray for our young people, all of them going on campus from pre-K to graduate school. We want to pray for them today. We want to pray for all those who work in those difficult places we've talked about. Also, some personal requests here that have always uh, stayed in front of us. We want to continue to pray for my former student, Megan Meeks. Uh, as I've shared, her last name is no longer Meeks. She is married. She's a military wife, so uh, I don't give her last name. Uh, but she's had some liver and kidney issues, uh, cysts on them, be in prayer for her. Um, my friend from high school, Jimmy Maldonado, his brother Ronnie, is coming off two strokes recently, be in prayer for Ronnie. Happy to say Roxy Clark, who took a fall last week, was back in church on Sunday and was a blessing to everybody, providing all kinds of goodies, uh, bringing all kinds of baked goods and, and, and gifts uh, to celebrate uh, Resurrection Day. So it was awesome. Continue to pray for those battling cancer or the treatment of cancer. Tammy Monk-Voschel, Bill Trollinger, Becky Valadez, uh, Rachel Gilbert, uh, Colby Van Dyke, and Emmanuel, who's in his 30s and battling cancer. Um, I'm going to pray for them. Darlene Carroll up in the Great Northwest, her friend Kathy Duncan, who has intestinal issues as well. Uh, pray for uh, their for mutual friend, Ralph, who's battling COPD. Continue to pray for our Spanish ministry. Vision Paradise, uh, Pastor Walter, Pastor Char, Pastor Francis, and Edgar in the group. And we, what we really pray for, too, is, is the bonds between Burbank Faith and Vision Paradise will continue to grow so we're united in ministry. Our relationship is very good right now, and so we want it to be even better, and we want to see that ministry thrive. Um, we're also praying for an Armenian ministry to come in and be part of us at Burbank Faith, but the right one, so be in prayer for that. Continue to pray for all of our messages that we do here and everything we do in the church um, and of course our, our, our projects that we do uh, in all the different places uh, in terms of you know keeping the uh, well we keep our bills paid we meet our obligations we do have those issues regarding um, broken stuff in the building and everything and a hundred year old building which I was proud to say well actually 95 year old building uh, if I, you saw my post on Facebook uh, Burbank Faith is 95 years old. The physical structure, the church is 96 years old, but uh, we moved in there in 1928. How cool. Uh, so be in prayer for those projects that crop up. Continue to pray <coughs> for Angel's Crest Christian Camp and uh, Brian Shaw and his family, as well as uh, Dave Krause and all of them that are digging out from the heavy winter and all the damage it's done to their property. And pray for home camp. That's our home camp is Granite Ridge, where we're a part of. 
and uh, I put in the box below, you're going to see down there in the box below is the link that goes to our, uh, our sign up for our 90 hours of prayer. We started it early this year. Uh, kids camp comes July 17th through the 21st. And I noticed Jan Hart has signed up, faithful member of Burbank Faith Virtual, um, has signed up for some shifts. Please take a look at those shifts because we want to cover, as we've done since 2018, we want every minute of every hour of every day that we're at camp, kids camp, covered in prayer. And, uh, and what we don't fill in the blocks here, we're up in the middle of the night as a staff, and even as students, our CITs, we fill all those prayer slots. They will not not be filled. So we want to get a head start on those if you could join us in that. Well, let's pray and then we'll let you go to start your day. And again, if you missed it yesterday, it's no big deal. Jesus is still alive. That tomb is still empty. And guess what? We're going to celebrate another resurrection day next week. Okay. All right. Let's pray. Lord, we do thank you for loving us, Lord. And we pray today, Lord, pray for ourselves in the sense, Lord, that we would set ourselves apart for you. And that, Lord, in that proximity of that closeness to you, Lord, um, we would be the best salt and light that we can be to the world around us, the world that opposes you. And, Lord, we would pray that same prayer for our young people, Lord. Protect them, guide them, but let them lean on you in those dark places today that, that, that do come about in some of our campuses, Lord, many of our campuses, from pre-K up through graduate school, Lord. Guard them, uh, but let them see the the truth in you the fraudulence of the world and let them lean on you keep them safe physically as well as spiritually lord we pray for this aspect of revival to reach our our our, our country our cities uh our homes and our hearts and that uh we would see another great explosion of your spirit in your people lord um lord we do ask for those that have been sick we pray for megan meeks we pray for ronnie maldonado we rejoice with roxy clark being back in church and we pray for Tammy, for Bill, for Becky, for Rachel, for Colby, for Emmanuel, for Darlene, for Kathy, and for Ralph, Lord. And we ask for Vision Paradise and their ministries, for the future Armenian ministry, Lord. Um, we pray for that group. And uh, Lord, we just ask that you be with us in all of our meetings like this, as well as we ask, Lord, that you uh, bless us financially to meet those obligations, not necessarily our obligations, but our responsibility as stewards of this generation at Burbank Faith um, regarding our building. Lord, uh, we do ask for Angeles Crest Christian Camp as they dig out and heal up from the heavy winter. And we ask for home camp. We ask for Granite Ridge, Shea Stewart, Tracy, Zach, Martha Floyd, uh, the whole staff up there, Danny, uh, Jan, Gary, everybody that's up there, Lord, Adam, Mick, Lord, we, we pray for them and that uh, camp is blessed. And that, uh, Lord, as we get ready for Outsiders Kids Camp, Lord, that you would uh, have your hand upon CIT Academy, Youth Camp, and Kids Camp, Lord, and uh, our prayer sheet, that it would be full very, very soon. Lord, again, we just uh, thank you for blessing us, for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, cool. So, there we go. Uh, we got it in in under 15 minutes, just like I promised. Be sure to sign up for that, that Sign Up Genius. You're not going to have to give any background history you don't have to sign up for anything you just put your name in a slot so we know that that slot is covered in prayer okay all right god bless take care and we will talk to you soon